So today I want to I want to talk to you about a, a kind of an interesting simple question and the question is have you seen him? Have you seen him? Church is really weird if you haven't seen him. Like stand up, sit down. But something amazing happens when you see him. Now, I'm not saying have you heard of him? That's a different question. I'm not saying do you know information about him? I'm saying, have you, with the eyes of your heart, through the scriptures and the spirit, have you seen him? See, if you look in the people in the, the people in the scriptures, there's a few people who saw him and like they were kind of done forever after that. Because it's like the guy who didn't go see the movie. You're like, I mean, I guess it's cool and everything. It seems like everybody's getting excited about, you are worthy of it all, I guess. What do we do? We put our hands up in this guy like, you haven't seen the film. When you've seen the film, or more specifically seen the God, it's life-changing. I'll tell you, I think growing up, I made up this word, but I would call myself growing up, I was more like a church gin. Everybody say church gin. Yeah, I made it up. It's not, you won't find it in Webster's. But the idea is like, I feel like I was closer to a church gin than a Christian. Yeah, and I did grow up in some craziness, too. Anybody grown up in some craziness? <laughs> yeah, a little side of craziness. Um, so it was like church gen is a side of craziness, and it made things really weird and blurry, to be honest, to see God, because it was confusing. But, my, you know, I got dragged there, and I knew when we stand up, I knew when announcements were, I knew they put stuff on the screen when to stand up, but I, it wasn't doing anything in me. But I will tell you, through some a lot of pain growing up and some um, challenge. How many of you know when things um, get intense, all of a sudden things get really black and white? <laughs> you know what I mean? Anybody have ever been through anything intense? Yeah? You're like, oh, I don't know if we're going to make it today. Going to school, t- can't see because of tears. Those kind of things. And it was out of pain and desperation. I said, God, if you're real, you better show up. I wasn't really looking to him because I thought he was fabulous. I was looking to him because I wasn't trying to drown. Anybody ever tried not to drown before? That's where I was. Here's the deal. I searched a bunch of other major religions. I was like, listen, I'm calling out to you, and I hope you're that guy. But you know what? I was born in this home. I could have been born in all kinds of homes. So whoever, if there's somebody on the other side, and whoever's on the other side, if you got power, I need you to help me now. And I may sing... And may get songs, but I tell you what, when I met him, everything changed in my life. Everything. And uh, it's amazing when um, you call to him and you realize he's actually listening. Not to get all spooky, but I remember I was dating my wife, Andrea, and we've been married 21 years. Holla. (laughs) Got two precious kids, Christopher and Symphony. My son's a little killer drummer. My little princess sings Symphony. And... um, but we were dating now. None of that had happened. And, um, and we, were ha- we were talking on the phone one day. And um, you ever had those just rough moments in a relationship? You're like, this is lame. It just, it ended pretty bad. And she's like, you know, I got to go. I got to go with my mom. And it just, I was like, oh. And so I remember, this is kind of a little TMI. We'll just get real, okay? So I remember, like, we hung up the phone. And I just felt like, you ever felt like you got punched in the stomach? You're like, oh, that ended lame. And I was praying, and I went to the side of my bed, and I was like, God, like, can you just like, have her call back and tell me she loves me so things are okay right now? I know it's a little, little bit too much emotional, but that was my prayer. And then my prayer went from something, something in, kind of insignificant to, you know what, are you even listening right now? Like, am I talking to the wall? Like, this is kind of dumb. Like, I'm hurting. But like, are you even listening to this? 45 minutes later, I get a call. And it's Andrea, and she was like, I, she already had to leave, so I don't know why she's calling. She's like, hey, I got to go with my, my mom, but I, um, I just want to tell you that I love you. I ain't mad at that. And, um, and then she said, pause. She said, God told me to call you. I was like, I'm sorry, did you, did you just say, <laughs> this is getting really personal right now because I just had a moment with God. You don't know anything about that. It was just me and God. And she said, God told me to call you. I was like, are you seriously listening to me? See, Hebrews eleven six 6 says that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So today I'm inviting you to press maybe farther than you've seen before. And I'm asking you, have you seen him? 
This isn't church gin business. This isn't chapel credit business. This is there's a God who's about to flex in the last days, glorify his son, and he's looking for who he can fill his spirit inside of people to do crazy things. It's ironic we keep going to Netflix and Disney Plus to watch adventures when we were literally destined to walk in adventures with God. And I can tell you I've seen some of them. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to see what else is down the rabbit hole. But you know what? If you haven't seen him, you literally settle for Disney Plus and Netflix. You're like, dude, that was sick. And then Marvel keeps getting weirder and weirder. And you're like, I guess it's okay. I don't know. When the whole time the Lord is inviting, he's looking throughout the earth to strengthen those hearts that are set on him. Second Chronicles 16, 9. Well, in my, my, my fragile journey, I'm bad at a lot of things, but God, people, music, that's what keeps me up at night. And I don't know why. I, um, I've been having melodies, you know, from like the womb, you know. As the story goes, my, my parents actually couldn't have kids. They prayed for a child to loan to God. And then my parents got pregnant. It's kind of a weird thing. Gave birth to my twin brother, David. And, and then the doctor said, push again. And she's like, what are you talking about? And like, I'm like, here I come. And they didn't even know I was there. Surprise. But God will call. And that's what I want to show you. Not only is there an adventure waiting, but it all starts with seeing him. I got two crazy bloodlines colliding me. I got, I'm Armenian, okay? I'm half Armenian. My grandparents fled from the genocide. I got 1,700 years of Christianity in this one side. And then I got this like psalmist music uh, peacemaking thing from the German Mennonite side of me. I kind of feel like it's kind of, my life's been commandeered. But it's pretty cool when God takes over. It's scary, but for whatever reason, I keep getting melodies and music. So after a bunch of records and music ministry in the local church and local and international mission stuff, I've seen God do crazy stuff, guys. That's why I said, don't settle for Netflix. It's like meh when you're walking in the adventure with God. The only problem is walking in the adventure with God will cost a lot. So this last five years, I started a work called Psalmist Mission, this idea being being a psalmist on mission for God. And I feel like it crystallized what I didn't understand I was carrying, you know? Because with broken relationship, well, my own dad and then, like, a lot of painful other environments, like, I'm like, where is the 50-year-old amazing artist who, like, follows God and still has the same wife and writes sick music? Like, can anybody find them? Besides PJ, you know? There's not many of them. How come every artist got to be like an internal train wreck and on their fourth marriage? Like, is there... Does anybody actually walk this stuff out that they sing about? You're worthy of it all. Texting his boo, you know. Like, that's weird. And I've already been in L.A. and Nashville enough and, like, seen so much madness. I'm like, is there somebody who can show me how to walk this out? So after, you know, tr stumbling forward for 20 years, Psalmist Mission really helped crystallize what I didn't understand I was carrying. And now we're raising up an army of others to make music and to carry the good gospel. The psalmist family's grown about 90 across California, and they're leading worship in more churches than I can even count. They look like a giant bag of Skittles, you know? It's like nothing like when the Koreans and the blacks and the Ukrainians and the African Americans, the Latinos and Armenians come together and just worship. Feels like a little pre-heaven Skittle party. I love it. Um, but anyways, I digress. Um, being called, I wouldn't use the word psalmist, but I felt like it clarified what I didn't understand he gave me, and it all came out of seeing him. So this whole idea of, like, have you seen him? When we see Jesus, like, tell me, how do we see Jesus? You're like, bro, I don't see him. He's not sitting here. Well, how would we see Jesus? Feel free to respond. Maybe the scriptures, right? Prayer, thank you very much. Get this little bit of Black Baptist, a little call and response. That's what I'm talking about. In the scriptures, in prayer. How about in life? Yeah. When, when things are amazing and also when you're like dry heaving. I got a song we dropped a couple um, recently. It's called Hold Me Together. It says, Lord, I knew it that you would come and rescue me, pull me through it. 
Even when I crumbled, cracked, and I blew it. Cause there's nothing like not being alone. What's crazy is people don't know that that song came in like 20 minutes when I was so jacked up in the studio. I was so wounded. He actually put, had to put two dear friends of mine right next to me who are incredible producers to suck the song out of me because I was that jacked up. But then as you share it, when you walk in it out, then God's get given strength to others because he'll hold me together, you know? And that is the God that I've come to see because he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you might say, well, listen, John, I can't see him, but you have the scriptures, amen? Yeah, you got the scriptures. By the way, I cannot promise you, this is what I tell my son, I cannot promise you they will not delete the Bible app in the next 10 years. Get it in your heart. Can I get an amen? Get it in your heart. And you know what, I know we're all digital, but you know, break out of analog. This thing still works, okay? They can't delete paper. They have to come hunt it, burn it, whatever, but at least you can have it close. Get it in your heart. King David said, I've hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. The more Bible in, the more Jesus there is. And guess what? Worship will become clearer because you start seeing him. It's all based on seeing him. So we see God in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in life, in the sorrows, and in the joys. We also see him in what? The heavens. Anybody ever like, can't, went out of the smog city and went up to the mountains and looked up at nighttime. Anybody done that recently? It's fire, right? You're like, where did these all come from? Because every night it's hidden by city lights and smog. Guess who wants to make sure you don't see his faithfulness? The enemy. We're looking through smog. I can't even see you. The enemy's like, sweet, that was the point. I can't stop God from being faithful and awesome, but I can blind you so you can't see him. But God is a, reward, a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So he shows us through himself to the scriptures and in prayer, in life, both sorrows and joys. And he also shows us himself in the heavens. I mean, have you ever looked at like a butterfly? You're like what kind of creature like starts ugly and turns awesome like right in front of my eyes? That's so weird, crazy. Anybody like aquariums? Yeah, come on, love aquarium. That's what, I've got a passionate aquarium. That's what I'm talking about. So we used to have a saltwater fish tank. Before we had kids, we called them our kids. And uh, the bombest fish God ever made. Anybody know what a mandarin goby is? Yes. Do you? It's crazy. Go look it up. After you pray about this message, go look up mandarin goby, okay? It's fire. It literally looks like a Jedi master who came from, like, uh, Star Wars, and he's like a paint canvas that God made. It's unbelievable. Anyways, that's the God you follow, folks. That's the God that people, that people look at you and say, you're so dumb to believe in. I say, I've opened my eyes a couple times and I've looked at the heavens and I've looked at the Mandarin Gobi and I'm like, dang, if you don't believe somebody made this, you got tons of faith. I'm seriously struggling to be an atheist. Not that faith is easy in Jesus. I'm just saying, Romans 1 said, his divine qualities and hidden nature are clearly seen throughout all creation so that men are without an excuse. You're like, dude, just open your eyes. Microbiology, what? Like, we have, like, humans, like, have seeds that have more seeds and, like, the apple inside the seed creates more apple trees. Like, what are we even talking about? This is crazy. Who did this? Somebody unbelievable. And then when you look at somebody's face or look at a baby's eye, like, wow, God. You see God. He speaks through the couple of he, uh, Greek words or the lagos, the, the written word of God, or the rhema, the spoken word of God. And he, do you know who the Bible says is the word of God? Say it louder. Jesus. Jesus literally is the image of the invisible God, Hebrews 1. You want to see the Father? Boom, there he, Jesus. Same thing. So that's the question. Um, have you seen him? I'm going to tell you, I do not assume you guys have all seen Jesus. If I would assume anything, I would say most of us are churchians like I was. But then God has a way of knocking people that he loves off their donkey and say, right here, bro, right here. Why don't you pick up that scripture, Disney Plus is whatever, anyways. Why don't you read a chapter today about me and ask the Holy Spirit to show me Jesus. I promise you, I'll show you myself.
You're hurting because you don't have a, you have a broken family. Guess what? I'm the most faithful family father you'll ever know. I remember when I found out in 2 Corinthians 6 that God said he'll be a father to me. I was like, what? Are you serious? Listen, I, I came through some broken stuff. I literally started drawing asterisks all over that page. Are you going to be my dad? Oh, my gosh. He started changing my life. Let me drop a scripture on you. Proverbs 25, 2. Check this out. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to seek it out. Did you know we got like this epic game of hide and go see going on right now? It's just that it matters more than anything. It's not like for just funsies. And the Lord's like, oh, I want you to know me real bad, but I'm not just going to come out and say it. So I'm going to drop these little Easter eggs all over the place. Blum, blum. Listen, you find them on YouTube. Why can't you find them in the Bible? They're all over the place. They're all over this earth. But the enemy's trying to distract us so much because we, it's not that he can't keep God from being awesome, but he can keep us from seeing God because we're running off of all these other things. Have any of you, anybody else been eating out of dumpsters too long? Well done. What I said was, has anybody been eating out of dumpsters too long, i.e. the wrong container? I'm here to tell you that what we consume on a regular basis is not best case scenario. And the whole time there's a good God who's inviting you to come see him. Your main passage that Pastor PJ has been sharing is out of Romans 12, 1. Um, this idea that responding to him. Why don't we read this together? Maybe we can put that on the screen. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, everybody say in view, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, pleasing, uh, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You're like, wait a minute. I thought worship is like when those like, good looking people get on a stage with their sweet clothes and their hair all did up and they're like, boom. Um, sorry. That may be part of it, but that is not what the Bible says worship is. It's just a part. I'm all about singing, and it's a beautiful part, but offering your bodies to God in response to his goodness, that's what worship is. Can I get an amen? When you don't just drive past that homeless dude who's hungry, and when your friend who's super annoying calls you for the third time and they just need to talk, unto God, that's worship, being there for the broken seeking him when nobody's looking. All right, I want to, um, as we kind of land a plane a little bit, I want to talk to you about what happens when people see God. Why I'm asking you, have you seen God? Because things happen when you see God. Let's look at Revelation 1. Anybody ever heard of the Apostle John? Throw your hands in the air. Yeah, yeah good. Good, he was one of the 12. That's good. Now, it's crazy, him and Jesus had something really special going on. He was the only dude at the cross, shout out to the ladies, there were a few ladies there, the fellas got all scared, except for John, and he was there. He was actually the only apostle who was not martyred. Did you know that? There's something cool when you're close to God, I'm just saying. They actually tried to kill him. Um, church history says that they actually tried to boil him in oil, and they couldn't get him. That's unbelievable. And then they finally said, fine, just throw this guy on an island. There's nobody there. It's called the island of Patmos. Well, on the island of Patmos, how many know sometimes your pain sends you to God's miraculous? That's when he got the, book, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the book of Revelation, because they couldn't kill him. That guy was on an adventure. Let's read this together. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and the kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea. I turned, all right, this part is important, so make sure you're either reading your Bible or looking at the screen. I turned around to see the voice who was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. 
His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. And in his right hand held seven stars. And coming out of his mouth with his sharp two-edged sword, it was not a feather, it was a sword. His face was like the sun shining in all his brilliance. All right, now I want to tell you about what happens when people see God. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. It's just typical when finite meets the infinite, okay? When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. He placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid, because Jesus is awesome. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one, and I was dead. Now look, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is, what is now, and what will take place later. That's around this time, and the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Can you imagine feeling super sad, isolated, alone, and abandoned? You're crying, maybe a little snot, don't tell anybody. You pray, you turn around, and you hear a voice, and it's the God-man. And his eyes are like blazing fire. I know some of you may not still even believe this. But something happens when you see a living God. Your life is undone. I can tell you about what happened when the prophet Isaiah, all of a sudden, he was doing his normal day and he was sucked in in Isaiah 6, about 20 feet from the throne room of God. I don't know if he was shot in his spirit or whatever. All of a sudden, he's seeing God. And the angels literally have six wings, guys. Two are only for flying. The other four are for shielding them because of God's awesomeness. Man, a six-wing angel because four are just to protect themselves from God. And Isaiah said, woe is me. I am ruined. When you see God, everything starts changing. And so that's what I want to invite you as we kind of prepare. I'm going to share a closing song with you. Um, And I'll just tell you, this is not the song I tried to write. I'm not even joking you. I was on a plane to go meet my producer, and the Spirit of God fell on me on a plane flight. I don't know how else to say it. I was sobbing. I didn't know what was happening, and he gave me this melody. And it wasn't the message I wanted to carry, but I do want to say what he wanted to say. And basically, when you see him, he is the source of life. He is the point. He is the greatest adventure you'll ever know, and he requires everything. See, the adventure and the joy you're going to experience are nothing like you've ever known. You'll just have to lay down your, like, old Happy Meal box you have in your hand to sit at his seven-course meal. Does that make sense? As we close, I'd like to share this, um, this song called Bow Everything. I want to submit that you can't um, respond to the guy that you haven't seen. It's really hard to, um, it's not, you have to be able to see him to worship him. But when you see him, everything you know will turn upside down. And you will want to give him all. This is Bow Everything. See, if he wasn't so phenomenal, he wouldn't deserve all that we have. But he never takes more than he gives. No sacrifice for praise required. Lord, do you see me that way? Please search the depths of my heart. I want to hear what you say. Much of the time what I bring to you It costs me nothing at all Oh, compared to all that you've done My sacrifice feels small Lord, because 
you purchased my life with yours. That's the only reason I get to whisper your name. Oh, see, all the glamour and lights are eclipsed by your see God that you bow low in weakness so so I could live for one thing I don't want to offer up that which cost me nothing Lord you bow low in weakness so So I just want to encourage you, thanks y'all. As you see God, let it be in your heart. You know what, I don't want to just do church gin, hollow thing anymore if there actually is a seven course meal on the table. And I'm telling you, he's looking for people who see his son and say, God, you can have all what I have. It's not really working anyways. What adventure do you got? He will blow your mind. I have seen the glory of God take over pubs in London. As an Armenian, I've been, was, been on the, was the worship leader on the 100th year of the Armenian genocide with my enemies in Turkey. And I saw how music and the spirit of God could heal the impossible. And I don't think he's done right in the story. So I pray a blessing over you. And I wanna encourage you, those of you gotta bounce, feel free. I'm gonna pray. But if you, if you wanna take a couple seconds to process with God about seeing him and about what he might wanna do in your life, even if it means bow everything to get his best, let's take a minute, I wanna encourage you as Pastor PJ prays and plays. God, we look to you today and I pray in the name of Jesus that you would reveal your son to William Jessup and the students here in such personal ways. Even as they sleep today, God, would you speak to them? Would you be willing them to open up the scriptures, speak to them in their prayers, when their, their crisis moments that you would engage and show your faithfulness and they would want to surrender what they have known for the best life they have been invited to know. The God who made them. Behold, I'm the God who made you. And God, I speak a blessing over them and would you continue to draw them to yourself. I pray that they would be history makers and psalmists who carry your gospel in crazy ways right in front of me. And I bless them in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, 